Hello and welcome to my quick little video tutorial that we're going to start talking about um, the basics of CNC machining. For this tutorial, um, what we have is an overhead 48 by 96 router that we're going to be using. And this router is predominantly utilized for uh, fibrous materials, be it woods, um, we can machine plastics on this. Uh, this machine will also allow us to handle some non-ferrous um, metals. However, you will notice that we have better machine quality um, out of other machines that we offer here at Summers High School, uh, such as the overhead mill um, and the metal lathes over in the metal shop, which we'll cover in a later video. Um, this router is a spindle type scenario, which has traditional router collets within it. Okay, so if it's a router bit, a traditional router bit, we can hold it within this spindle. Um, it also allows us to take many milling bits into it as well. So it has that cross between a router and a spindle. It's closer to a router, router excuse me, than a um, mill in the sense that the, the speeds at which we're machining at um, are much higher. So this machine uh, traditionally is running somewhere at a maximum of 18,000 RPMs and it will allow us to slow down for uh, our non-ferrous metals like 4,000 RPMs, but it's not as rigid as you would find in a traditional mill. So those extreme cutting forces that are required on steels and our ferrous metals um, will be covered in our overhead mill. So the first thing that we need to take a look at is when we turn this machine on, um, we get a warning telling us that this machine home is not set. So prior to doing anything on this machine, um, make sure, number one, obviously we're covering and following all our safety protocols that have been covered uh, in a previous lesson. Um, but once you get this machine set up, we have to go ahead and turn our, or home the machine as it's called. What we're doing when we home the machine is we're telling the machine where this whole carriage is in relation to the table. So if you take a look, right now this carriage can be kind of placed in an awkward position and it yet does not know where it's at. So it needs to reference itself to determine where it is on the table. So to home this machine, you're seeing that it needs a cycle start button. So our cycle start button, we have a couple options on this machine. Number one, on our jog pendant, we have this green button, which is our cycle start. We also, on our keyboard, can hit Alt-S, which will be a cycle start as well. For sake of... Uh, familiarity, I'm going to hit the green button here, which is cycle start. Now, please make sure when you hit the cycle start button that you do move away from the table as it is going to jog and find its home position. How it finds its home position is actually very simple. Um, if you take a look at this machine or any CNC machine, there's going to be a set of little buttons that are depressed. So in other words, when this machine jogs to one side, it's going to depress a button. And when that button is depressed, what you'll find is the machine will depress that side and then move off that button slightly, okay? So it'll move off that in a precise increment that it already knows. So if it slides to one side, hits the button, and then moves back a quarter of an inch or 0 .250, all right, it now knows exactly where it's at. So I'm going to go ahead and hit my cycle start button, all right? And you'll see that this is going to go ahead and move up, touch. It's now coming down, and it does move at a pretty slow rate when it's uh, doing its machine home. All right. If you receive an error message like I've just done here, basically what it's saying is the Z differs um, from its factory setting. The Z differs from what it should be set at. At the time being, or at this time being, we're just going to accept it by hitting the Y button for yes. You'll see it's going to now jog in our uh, X direction, all right? So it's jogging in its X direction, hits the center, backs up. It's now going to come in the Y direction or towards myself, hit that sensor, and then go ahead and back off again. All right. Once we've done that, what you'll notice is that it now is going to read numbers up on our display. So prior to homing it, we just had a series of dashes. And what that means is the machine really did not know where it was at yet, okay? So now that it has gone ahead and homed itself, it now has relative coordinates in both the X, Y, and Z uh, axes. 
all right? This machine does now have coordinates in X, Y, and Z. Okay, so once we have those coordinates, we are now able to go ahead and set our zeros, okay? So your zeros can be set on this machine in any particular point, all right? In other words, I could go ahead and move this machine to this point right here and call that my zero, comma, zero, comma, zero. What that means is I have zero both set in the x direction, the y direction, as well as the z direction, okay? So that's very important when we start to talk about setup and how we're gonna set up our parts um, to really get an understanding of what our uh, coordinates are set up. In our next video, we are going to be covering how to set up in our x, y, and z uh, scenario. And like I said, that does depend on the part, all right? So the first thing I'm gonna do um, in our next video is I'll show you how to just put a zero, zero, zero in this bottom left corner. And then I'll also show you how to set up a different part if we were to have a, a different zero that needs to be set up, let's say, um, two inches off the table and uh, somewhere up here, okay? So that concludes the first lesson. Next lesson, we're gonna cover how to set up our zeros. Thank you.